Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, sir. Thank you, sir. In this, you stay in Kroger? Yes, sir. You belong to Kroger? Yes, sir. So, you are sitting in heaven? Yes, sir. Can be said. When I say heaven, what do you mean? So, all the resources for the preparation of UPSC and my school and my college were all nearby. And also, sir, uh, we have other facilities, markets, uh, and other such facilities. So, in that time. Do you think I meant by heaven this thing which you have told me, or I some, something different? So by heaven, uh, I thought that it would mean ease of living uh, for a student like me. What about pollution here? Uh, so pollution is there uh, in Kaluga also, especially uh, the pollution uh, uh, from vehicles because uh, it's a very uh, busy place and there are many roads uh, in this region. So that is why we have pollution from vehicles here. Okay, you have done your BCom from SRCC and and come from New World. So yes. finished? Yes, sir. Last one year? Uh, sir, in the last month I finished, in June. In the last one year it's all online or there were physical classes also? Uh, sir, for the past one year it was completely online and the exams also were uh, online. Which college is better, SRCC or Hindu College? Uh, so both the colleges are good and uh, they both have their pros and cons. But uh, SRCC being my first college, I have particular preference for SRCC. And uh, you have submitted some case study to Niteyo on women empowerment. Yes, sir. What was that? So the case study was about uh, political participation of women at the grassroots level and what was uh, its impact after the implementation of the 73rd and the 74th uh, Act. So I, the, in the case study, I dwell in two matters uh, that women serpentures have taken up. Uh, women serpentures like uh, Bhakti Sharma in Madhya Pradesh and which which states you concentrated on in this study? Uh, they say? So it was not a particular concentration on a state, but it was an overall picture in which I took examples of two uh, panchayat leaders, one from Madhya Pradesh and one from Rajasthan. So uh, I look into the matter how uh, the coming of the women serpentures have helped into raising of the up of the grassroots level issues like water, sanitation, low. But your these two serpentures from Madhya Pradesh and uh, Rajasthan. Gave you enough uh, scope for forming your forming of your views that yes, women are empowered. Sir, the case study was not limited to these examples. They were just uh, examples taken up to uh, validate the other points that I have put up in the case study. Uh, for example, the role uh, of the women serpentures in the overall development. Mm -hmm. Also, sir, the various issues that are faced by women serpentures. For example, there was the serpent puppy syndrome. Tell me, in the last 25, 26, 27 years, because of this generation, now generation is how much? Sir, so 33% for women are uh, serpentures. More than 20 states, it is more than 50%. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. So, whether that generation has really empowered to that extent, it should have been serpentures and even uh, this word. Uh, in charge of whatever members and all, has it really given that effect or still serpents patis are dominating? Sir, if we look at the initial period after the coming of this act, then there was, yes, there were some issues like the serpents pati, but I believe that over a period of time, and this was also reflected in my case study also, that many young women are also coming up, which are not. That is why I am asking which area you study. Oh, well, well. So the areas uh, of concern also, like the Sarpanjpati syndrome. No, no, no. Which, which states you study? Uh, so it was not uh, concentrated to any particular state. It was a mix of all India experience. So uh, the impact that... You tell me which which state women Sarpanjis uh, and the elected representatives are really empowered. And where which state they are totally empowered. Still not being able to handle because of many factors. Sir, so I don't think so that uh, any one particular state is, has achieved all the benefits and any one particular state has all the backwardness. But yes, there are some instances of good uh, achievements by women uh, subconscious in some states. And there are some issues which could be further addressed. For example, giving up the finances for these uh, local bodies. Okay, what are the key concepts of international relations? So key concepts of the international relations include uh, balance of power, uh, deterrence, especially in the context of nuclear. Uh, weapons and uh, international diplomacy, uh, neighborhood first in the case of India, and uh, uh, UN clause was an important uh, 
aspect in this also. What about national interest? Yes, sir. National interest. That is the first one. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. National interest is one of the core philosophies of international relations. Okay. Mm. What are the constituents of Ahmut Keller? You have filled that Ahmut as your choice. Yes, sir. Being from Delhi. Yes, sir. What are the constituents? Sir, Delhi, Goa, uh, Mizoram. Uh, Arunachal Pradesh and the Union Territories of India. Which are those? Uh, sir, Lakshadi, uh, Andaman and Nicobar Island, Chandigarh, uh, Daman and Dew and Dada Nagar Haveli, which is one uh, Union Territory, and then uh, Ladakh and uh, Jammu Kashmir. Okay. <coughs> Tell me salient features of constitution. Sir, Indian constitution? Yes. Sir, Indian constitution is one of the largest written documents in the world. And some of the salient features include it contains almost uh, elaborate uh, uh, elaborate provisions on almost every uh, important topic. For example, it has fundamental rights. The fundamental rights uh, has further reasonable restrictions. It also has fundamental duties, directive principles of state policy, and also so various uh, uh, provisions about the union, the judiciary, the state level, and various constitutional bodies also, like the Election Commission of India. So these are some of the separation of powers between three constituents. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, schedule seven: the separation of powers, the distribution of powers between the center states and the residual subjects. Also, sir, after the eleventh uh, and twelfth schedule, it also has panchayati raj and municipal bodies also. Uh, Nitesh, so uh, one question of feminism. So, uh, can you define four ideas of feminism in international politics? Uh, Ma'am, uh, the start of feminism uh, was initially done with the concept of liberal feminism, uh, which later evolved into the second wave of feminism, which was uh, social feminism. And the third wave of feminism is considered as the true feminism, which focuses on equity for women and freedom for women. So these are some of the core philosophies. Could you please explain the layman form that? What do you mean by that? Uh, for, uh, from feminism, for a layman, we mean that Women gets autonomy. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the human rights issues in case of women rights, it was also said by former Secretary of State of United States, Hillary Clinton, that human rights are women rights and women rights are human rights. Also, ma'am, the autonomy of women over their own body. For example, there are issues of uh, maternal mortality and uh, pro life versus pro choice in international relations. So, these are some issues. Also, many countries are also coming up with a feminist foreign policy. Like Sweden was the nation which came up with a feminist foreign policy. So these are some issues related to international relations. What do you think is the main critic that feminist scholars have in regards to international relations? Ma'am, one of the important critic is that nations uh, focus on their national interest and uh, they do not uh, focus on uh, women-related aspects. For example, uh, the women uh, issues in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Yemen. In these countries, it has been not highlighted uh, as it should have been highlighted. What do you think would be the reason for that? Um, the nature of international politics is such that the countries only focus on, uh, the majority of the countries focus on their national interest. So if uh, even the most dominant power is uh, having its national interest against uh, uh, one particular territory, and even if the women are not being uh, able to uh, bring up their issues, the countries not raise the women issues in that matter. Don't you think that men dominate the international relation politics and that is one of the reasons that you know the policies are never around uh, the women. So what is your view on that? Do you agree with that or do you don't agree with that? I believe that both men and women can make uh, good policies for women and yes there should be some sort of representation for women in international politics but that representation should not be symbolic. That representation should be substantive and I believe that even men, even male leaders can raise up those issues. For example, in the case of India, uh, the Indian government has raised many women-friendly issues. So, uh, this is my take on that. So, our Prime Minister uh, has envisioned to make India art in Yes, ma'am. So, to what extent do you think that this is possible? As the vision of the Honorable Prime Minister goes, uh, I believe that Atman Nirbhata in critical sectors, strategic sectors, uh, is uh, the right approach. For example, in defense sector, we are now manufacturing 
uh, many products which we earlier not uh, we were uh, earlier not manufacturing. Right. Uh, like ma'am, the Tejas uh, helicopter uh, that the HAL has recently made. Uh, it was largely the we purchased helicopters, attack helicopters from foreign. So now we are also ramping up our domestic manufacturing. Also, there is the uh, uh, defense corridor in UP and Tamil Nadu coming up. Second, ma'am, in the case of uh, uh, pharmaceuticals, we were uh, importing around 70% of active pharmaceutical ing ingredients from China. So it is also a critical and strategic sector. In that, we can have Atma Nirbhata. And the government has uh, launched a scheme called the Production Link Incentive Scheme through which we are uh, incentivizing companies to manufacture in our country. Third, uh, the Atman Nirbhata could be in the uh, technology sector. For example, uh, the Chinese dominance in artificial intelligence and 5G could be harmful for the interest of India. So in that sector, I believe there could be Atman Nirbhata, but also as the government has mentioned, that Atman Nirbhata does not mean self-sufficiency, it means self-reliance. So I believe that is the right approach in that direction. So you uh, think that you know whatever our Prime Minister has envisioned, so we'll be able to achieve that and uh, there are no uh, doubts about it. Um, in that stipulated time. Yes ma'am. Ma'am, if uh, we follow a policy of uh, Atma Nirvata uh, with a uh, full focus and full vigor, then I believe that that could be achieved. However, there are certain challenges that needs to be overcome. For example, the environmental laws, the labor laws, and the easing of the ease of doing business, they must be eased. So I believe that if we do that, we will be, we'll be able to achieve the Atma Nirvaya Bharat uh, scheme. Okay, so uh, you scheme. also showed us in Indian mythology. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so you are also showing us uh, sorry ma'am, I'm not aware about the exact incident. Yeah, Lord Krishna had advocated human sacrifice uh, in one of the instances. Are you aware of it? Sorry ma'am, I'm not aware about that. Okay. And uh, uh, what is your view on Hinduism? Is it compatible with science? Can you, if yes or no, whatever your uh, you know, answer is. If you could also explain it, but how it is compatible or not compatible? Yes, um, uh, Hinduism is a way of life, and I believe that uh, Hinduism is compatible with science. We have many examples from an ancient text. For example, in Ramayana, also as far as dating back to Ramayana, we have examples of how a uh, uh, bridge is built by the uh, Ram uh, Ram to Sri Lanka. Also, ma'am, coming forward to the more uh, historical period uh, in the Vedic period, also. There are uh, many uh, texts uh, like uh, in the Vedas uh, which talk about herbal medicines, which talk about uh, yoga, Patanjali Sutra Yoga and other medicines also. For example, uh, Sushutra uh, gave up uh, surgery and medicines also, astronomy also by Aryabhatta. So I believe that Hinduism is compatible with science. So, you know, I remember that recent thing on Baba Ramdev where he said that, you know, vaccination is not required. So what is your view on that? Oh, Ma'am, I believe that uh, such statements uh, it does not uh, justify Hinduism uh, because uh, vaccination was also some sort of part uh, in the ancient Hindu way of life also. We had examples of uh, taking off cowpox and injecting them to humans for uh, uh, vaccinating them against uh, smallpox. So we have such kind of examples and I believe that both allopathy and uh, traditional Hindu system can go uh, together and there need not be any confrontation between them. Thank you. Yes, sir. What is MasterCard and news for? Sir, sir, MasterCard. Yes, sir. MasterCard is it news? Yes, sir. What is it news for? Sir, yesterday the Reserve Bank of India has uh, banned uh, MasterCard and all the uh, all similar players to having new registration of customers. And the reason for that is that they were not compliant with the uh, data localization norms set by the Reserve Bank of India. So currently only we have Lupe and Visa as the only uh, players who can enroll new customers. So what is the implication of this? Will all these MasterCards become inactive? No sir, the, it would not have any impact on the existing users. They would be able to continue with their deals, but uh, the companies would not be able to register any new customers. What do you understand by data localization? Sir, data localization means that the data that uh, these companies have, for example, 
the payment platforms or even the Facebook and Twitter. The data that these companies have, that uh, copy must be stored within the country. And there could be various forms of data localization. There could be data mirroring, that is one set of data should be stored in India and the other could be stored in other country. And second is that complete, only one set of data should be there which should be stored in India. Um, stock markets have been rising. Yes, sir. Do you think stock markets are a reflection of actual economic performance or it's, uh, it's completely unconnected? Sir, there are some sort of uh, reflections of the actual economy in the stock market. For example, uh, in the initial wave of the pandemic, the stock market was uh, crashing in last February. But I don't believe that there is, it is complete reflection because we see that the stock market is based on future projections and the investors invest uh, on, the, on the shares based on how the uh, share will play in the future. Whereas the economic situation that we are facing now is based on the current situation. For example, the employment scenario, the inflation scenario. So in that manner, stock market is different from the actual economic scenario. Adani has been in news with respect to the stock market. Adani. Yes, sir. Are you familiar with the controversy? Uh, no, sir, I'm not aware about that. Adani stocks crashed. Sorry, sir, I would not follow that. You have not followed. Right. Uh, uh, reading about Indian mythology. Yes, sir. Can you take some uh, lessons from Indian mythology that can be applied in contemporary times? Yes, sir. Sir, lessons from Indian mythology can be uh, taken in multiple domains. For example, if we uh, talk about international relations, then uh, when Ramji has to cross uh, the ocean to go to Lanka, then he requests the ocean for three days. And when the ocean does not heed to its request, then he takes a harm. So that is one philosophy in international relations, that you have to be strong to make peace. Second, in the field of economy, that we have to be self-sufficient and we have to be uh, capable enough to have our own domestic needs met. Otherwise, the enemy will uh, attack on us. Uh, thirdly, sir, the values of sacrifice that we see in the mind, that could be taken up at the personal level. For example, uh, we as students or any other person can take up those values. Also, sir, the values uh, propagated in Mahabharata also talks about love and compassion for your own country. For example, the knowledge that Bhishma gave to Arjun on his deathbed was relating to how a country should be run and how the ruler should be uh, watchful for its people and he should, he should be caring for its people. So these values are also reflected in our text like Arthashastra also. Now, uh, Hinduism as a religion is restricted to a certain geographical region. Yes, sir. But Buddhism, which originated in India, uh, went across to a larger region. What happened? Why was Hinduism not able to spread to a larger region? Yes, sir. So we saw that uh, Hinduism was largely prevalent in the Indian subcontinent but although it was also spread to other South, uh, Southeast Asian countries also for example we have Hindu kingdoms in uh, Indonesia, we had in Vietnam, Barbados temple, Angkor Wat temple, in Sri Lanka also but yes Buddhism as a religion was more able to dominate in those religions and it was the most prevalent form because the values that Buddhism promotes uh, of Madhyam Marg and values that are very uh, similar to those particular uh, regions. So I believe that that could be one reason. Also, sir, uh, with the coming of foreign uh, invaders into the country, the uh, promotion of Hinduism outside the country was also affected, which was earlier seen before the coming of the foreign rulers. So that could be another reason. What is called DuPont analysis? Uh, sir, DuPont analysis. Sir, sir, I am not aware about that. You are a commerce student, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, not heard of the DuPont analysis? I know, sir. Oh, what do you mean by a leveraged company? Sir, a leveraged company means a company which has uh, taken uh, uh, loans and borrowings uh, from the market. So that is called a leveraged company. Okay. Uh, the companies which have borrowed uh, the capital and got the funds from the market for running office the business, that is a leveraged Why company. Why is it called leveraged? Say, uh, uh, companies uh, had a lot of debts, you can say, why, how do you say, why is they find the word leverage? What do you mean by leverage in that situation? Uh, so, as far as uh, I understand, uh, the meaning of the word leverage uh, in that particular scenario could denote that uh, it is for a limited period of time and not uh, for permanency. Yeah. Why do they call leverage? Oh, oh, oh. Why that leverage word is used in that? 
says it's 80 percent. Uh, sir, I recently read in a newspaper, though I'll check that fact, sir. Okay. Now and then? Sir, also there are uh, political issues between the center and states. For example, on the appointment of governors, that is uh, another issue. Where it is. Not really, you are concerned with the appointment of governors. Sir, uh, the issues uh, that are there between the center and states, and these issues can be resolved at the platform of the Nikayo, if both the states... Appointment of governors can be resolved in uh, Nikayo. No, sir, I meant that uh, in the future we can have an uh, issue in which both the center and the states can come at Nikayo and raise the various issues that they have and formulate a mechanism to solve those issues. In political issues? Uh, yes, sir, in future it could also be uh, dealt uh, to for having better corporate federalism. Uh, how do you see uh, center state relations? In the last six, seven years. So I believe that the center state relations are have been uh, they have been both points of ups and lows. For example, uh, the passing of the GST was a high point because all the states came together. But after GST, the issues like the compensation says, especially during the Corona time, it was an issue between the center and states. Also, sir, uh, in the Corona time, we also saw the vaccines issue. Because first the center had uh, the centralized policy, then it was given to the states, and finally it was again taken back by the center. So uh, it was also an issue between center and states. Also, sir, there has been issues in uh, the appointment of governors and the role of function of the governor in the states. So these are some issues. Sir. What are the issues related to the role of governors? Sir, the issue between, uh, in the role of governors is that uh, the powers that the governor has in appointing the chief minister in case uh, where no one party has got uh, uh, absolute majority. So in states like Maharashtra and uh, uh, other states, there has been some issues in which the Supreme Court also has to interfere. So this is... Tell me, uh, you said the GST is one model where state and center came together and the challenges. Uh, this GST model, Yes, sir. Uh, can it be implemented in other sectors? And if so, what are all the things uh, you can suggest? Sir, I believe the center and states, the way they came together in GST, for example, the center uh, guaranteed the states a 14% uh, increase in their revenues uh, for the revenue neutral rate. And if uh, the states are not able to have that revenue, they will be given a compensation. I believe such kind of formula could be implemented with the farm laws. For example, the farmers are very apprehensive that with the coming of the private sector, their incomes would fall. But if we assure them that their incomes won't fall, and if... So you also said uh, the center could not fulfill that promise. Yes. Even the constitution provided that promise, but the center has not fulfilled that promise of compensation. In this situation, how do you think uh, it will be successful in farming sector? So the center was uh, having some issues in the corona time because of uh, lack of revenue. But uh, in quick succession of time, the center was able to solve that issue and the compensation has been paid to the states of rupees 1 lakh crore. So I believe that model could be uh, applied in the farm laws also. If the farmers are feeling apprehensive that uh, their income would be reduced, then center can guarantee them certain package and also the center can motivate the farmers to diversify from wheat and rice to other cereals and fruits. Thanks. Okay, this interview is over.